The Fukushima catastrophe is probably the worst nuclear disaster in, in human history. It's certainly worse than Chernobyl. The contamination from Fukushima has gone as far south as Tokyo. Uh, I have measured it personally in air filters from cars. At least 12 different air filters from cars were sent to me, some of them from the south of Tokyo and many of them from 100 kilometers away from Fukushima. And they contain very large amounts of radioactivity in them, high, 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 high levels of cesium-134 and cesium-137. So we can conclude without any doubt that that area, up to 200 kilometers, maybe more, away from the catastrophe, catastrophe site, has been seriously contaminated with radionuclides. Now, if the cars are breathing this material, then so are the people, and so are the children. And so the children will be contaminated with radioactivity. So today, I'm in Washington, D.C. A couple weeks ago, though, I was in Tokyo. And when I was in Tokyo, I took some samples. Now, I didn't look for the highest radiation spot. I just went around with five plastic bags. And when I found an area, I just scooped up some dirt and put it in the bag. One of those samples was from a crack in the sidewalk. Another one of those samples was from a children's playground that had been previously decontaminated. Another sample had come from some moss on the side of the road. Another sample came from a, um, um, the, the roof of an office building that I was at. And the last sample was right across the street from the main judicial center in downtown Tokyo. Well, I brought those samples back, declared them through customs, and sent them to the lab. And the lab determined that all of them would be qualified as radioactive waste here in the United States and would have to be shipped to Texas to be disposed of. Now think about the ramifications for the nation's capital, whether it's Tokyo or the United States. How would you like it if you went to pick your flowers and were kneeling in radioactive waste? That's what's happening in Tokyo now. And I think that's the point that Chairman Yasko was trying to make. When the Nuclear Regulatory Commission does its cost-benefit analyses now, it doesn't take into account the cost to society if you have to evacuate for generations or if you have to move 100,000 people, perhaps forever. There's 100 miles between us and about a dozen nuclear power plants here in Washington, D.C. Fukushima was almost 200 miles away from Tokyo. And yet Tokyo soil, in some places, the ones I just happened to find, would qualify as radioactive waste here in the States. Environment Minister Goshi Hosono has asked the municipal government of Kitakyushu in western Japan to accept a portion of the debris from last year's disaster in northeast Japan. Hosono made the request during a meeting with Mayor Kenji Kitahashi in the city on Sunday. Earlier this month, Kitakyushu City's Assembly voted unanimously to accept the debris. The city has since been studying a detailed disposal plan, including a new safety standard for radiation levels. Ishinomaki is one of the hardest hit cities. We'd appreciate it if your city could accept a portion of the debris. Some citizens have expressed concern about accepting the debris, but unless the rubble is cleared, the damaged areas will never be able to recover. Kitahashi revealed a plan to send city employees to Ishinomaki to conduct a study before starting test incinerations of the debris. But that, re that, that leads us to another problem, because what's happening now, as I'm told, is that the Japanese government are trucking radioactive material from the Fukushima disaster area, where it's contaminated, all over Japan. And even as far south as the south of Japan, we're now getting reports of, of uh, radioactivity, uh, radioactive material being taken all the way to the south of Japan to be burned. Now, what possible reason could there be for burning it as far away as that? I'll tell you the reason. It's really quite sinister and horrifying. The reason is this. 
that eventually when these children start to die from leukemia, from other cancers, from heart disease, from whatever, their parents are going to want to go into court. They're going to want to sue the Japanese government and they're going to want to have to say these, in order to do that, these children were contaminated and that's why they've got high levels of cancer. But of course, the only way that they can say that they've got high levels of cancer is to have a control group in an area that's not contaminated. For example, the south of Japan. So I believe that the project to take this material and burn it all over Japan is to destroy all of Japan, is to increase the, the, the cancer rate in the whole of Japan so that there will be no control group to which you can compare these children in the Fukushima areas. Tokyo Electric Power Company has shut down a nuclear reactor in Niigata Prefecture for regular inspections. This leaves only one reactor out of 54 in Japan in service. TEPCO suspended operations at the Kashiwazaki Kariwa plant early on Monday. All 17 of the company's reactors, including those in Fukushima Prefecture, have now been taken offline. In Japan, none of the reactors suspended since the Fukushima nuclear accident last March have resumed operations. The last active reactor located in northern Japan will be suspended by early May. At the summit, hundreds of anti-nuclear activists staged a rally in Seoul. About 500 protesters were on the streets. The demonstrators included people from South Korean civic groups and others from Japan, Taiwan and the United States. A uh, rally organizer says South Korea has had a series of problems at its nuclear power plants, including a power outage. He says the summit delegates must discuss nuclear disarmament and the abolition of nuclear power plants. A woman from Fukushima, Japan, called on people to work together to create a nuclear-free society. I want to tell the world about how people in Fukushima have been affected by last year's accident. Any country with nuclear power could face similar problems. More plants equals more danger. An outgoing senior Japanese official at the United Nations says Japan should play the role of democratic leader in East Asia to meet international expectations. This comes amid the rise of China and North Korea's nuclear development. UN Under Secretary General Kiyotaka Akasaka made the comment in an interview with NHK. He will leave the post later this month at the end of his five-year term. I believe the world is looking for Japan to take a leadership role in the region. As the country has established democracy, respect for human rights and liberalism. Akasaka expressed a sense of crisis that Japan is losing momentum. He cited reductions of official development assistance and a decrease in the number of Japanese employees at international organizations. The UN official said discussions remain stalled on the planned reform of the Security Council. He said Japan needs to make an all-out effort if it wants to become a permanent member. Japan's annual foreign policy report, or Blue Book, says North Korea's nuclear and missile development is a global threat. The report calls for action to denuclearize the nation. The report compiled by the foreign ministry says Japan will work with the U.S., South Korea and other countries to urge North Korea to take denuclearization steps such as suspending uranium enrichment. The report also mentions the abduction issue and Japan's demand that the North start a full investigation based on a 2008 agreement. The Blue Book says the government will make every effort to return the abductees to Japan as soon as possible. U.S. President Barack Obama and South Korean President Lee myung bak have called on North Korea to abandon its planned rocket launch. NHK World's Joe Shaw has this report from Seoul. President Obama arrived in Seoul on Sunday to attend the Nuclear Security Summit. He and President Lee met briefly before holding a joint news conference. <laughs> We agreed that North Korea's planned rocket launch violates a UN Security Council resolution and is a provocation to the international community. Lee said he intended to take decisive action if North Korea goes ahead with the launch. He also said the international community would offer support if the North gives up its nuclear and missile development. Obama said the missile launch will only deepen the North's isolation. 
North Korea will achieve nothing by threats or by provocations. North Korea knows its obligations, and it must take irreversible steps to meet those obligations. Earlier on Sunday, Obama visited the demilitarized zone dividing North and South Korea. The visit is seen by some as a show of Obama's resolve that, as U.S. Commander-in-Chief, he will tolerate no further provocations by North Korea. During the two-day nuclear security summit that opens on Monday, the two leaders are expected to call for unified action by the international community to stop the rocket launch. Joe Shaw, NHK World, Seoul.